my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Good morning, Daddy. Marge, does the Board of Health know we're running a cafeteria? You know what the doctor says. A hearty breakfast pulled you through the day. Well, this bread will pull me from Monday through Friday. <laughs> well, what's that for? Happy weekend, Daddy. Margie, you're not fooling your old pappy. What's behind all this? You better eat your waffles while they're hot. Are you up to one of your old tricks? What kind of jelly would you like? We have honey, strawberry, raspberry, Well, cherry, are you? Orange, lemon, and lime. Margie, stop that. Oh. Here's the morning paper, Dad. Shall I open it to the sports or the financial page? But I thought you said oh, you... Oh, never mind what you thought. If you want to read the paper at breakfast, it's perfectly all right with me. Well, maybe a peek at the utilities. Here's a piece of toast. But you said I made noise when I ate toast. Let me butter it for you. What? Well, the butter's kind of hard, and I wouldn't want you to strain yourself. Margie, are you feeling all right? I feel wonderful, perfectly wonderful. And I was just thinking how perfect it would be if you would take me with you to Mexico. Take back your toast. Okay. Hey, that's my breakfast. It's a drugstore for you. Margie, this is one time your tricks won't work. Once and for all, I absolutely, positively, irrevocably, and irrefutably refuse to take you with me to Mexico. No? No. I just hate a man who won't say what he means. <laughs> oh, Margie, be reasonable. I'll only be gone a couple of days. I'll be back before you know it. Dad, I'm surprised at you. You're willing to leave your little Margie alone and defenseless on the great big island of Manhattan, surrounded by 4,126,032 men. You've been living with those odds for 21 years, and what have you got to show for it? Pretty. Oh, yes, but you've been here to protect me. You know how the old saying goes, when the cat's away, the mice will play. I don't follow you. But I tell you, Sam, this is the greatest stunt of all. Your picture will make the front page of every paper in the country. Come in. Look, Sam, I guarantee you this stunt is sure fire. Now, this is what you do. You go up to the top of the Empire State Building at lunch hour, and at exactly 1 o'clock, you jump. Now, of course you don't really jump. I'll get up there in the nick of time, and I'll stop you. Don't worry, Sam. I'll be there. Well, what can I do for you? You're not small enough to go over Niagara in a barrel. You don't look strong enough to swim the English Channel, and uh, obviously you're not cut out for flagpole sitting. Well, thank you. I think. My name is Margie Albright, and I'm in need of your services. Well, I know just what you need. Now, you sit down there. Now, cross your legs. Uh, let's see. Yes, that's fine. Just a little bit more cheesecake, and you'll look perfect. Now, just a minute, Mr. Grant. As long as you've started running up a bill, you might as well call me by my first name. E? <laughs> the initials just the front. Everybody calls me Tommy. All right, Tommy. I don't think you understand the kind of publicity I want. You see, I'm anxious to make my father think I'm painting the town with the most romantic, exciting, and notorious bachelor. Well, it shouldn't be any problem for you. You don't get it. I want to be seen at nightclubs, parties, and shows, but I don't want to go. 
And I want this man to send me flowers, candy, and expensive gifts so my father will worry and take me to Mexico. Oh, you'd like your father to think that you're mixed up with a wolf. That's right. Now, Dad's leaving in a couple of days. Do you think you can put it across? Me and the uh, imaginary wolf? You just leave everything to me. After tonight, your father will be calling you Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> Good. Now, if the scheme works, Tommy, I'll double this. And don't worry about the flowers and gifts. I'll pay all the expenses. What do we do first? Well, first we uh, grab a bite of lunch. It's almost one o'clock. You had a one o'clock date on top of the Empire State Building. You were supposed to meet a man and stop him from jumping. It's too late now. I guess I'll have to meet him at the bottom. <laughs> Dad, my zipper's stuck. Would you help me with it, please? Well, what have we here? <laughs> Do you think it's too, uh, chee he Well, it certainly isn't he. -he. <laughs> Let me see that zipper. <laughs> Hurry, Dad, I have a big evening planned, and I don't want to be late. There. Going out with Freddy? Uh-uh. A uh, special date tonight? <laughs> you guessed it, Dad. First we'll have dinner, then a show. Afterwards, we'll go dancing. Well, honey, don't you think it would be a good idea to tell me who you're going out with? Oh, now, Dad, don't you worry. You said nothing can happen to your little Margie. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Tom. Hi. I did like you said. Now, where do we go from here? We're here. Here? That's right. While we watch a double feature, your old man will read in the paper tomorrow that you were seen in all the night spots in the company of that bon vivant, that handsome rich man about town, Tex Malloy. Our imaginary wolf? Right. Now, here's the deal. He's a millionaire Texas oil man, see? He's got 5,000 oil wells that just pump, 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 and he's got almost as many girlfriends. Now, this is what we're going to do. All right. You asked for it. That bullet went right through you. Tommy, it's 12.30. Can we go now? Are you crazy? Who ever heard of Tex Malloy taking a date home at 12.30? Here. That's more fun. Zelda, you shot me. Oh, Jim, what have I done? Tommy, it's 3 o'clock. Now? Howard, we've only seen the picture five times. <laughs> what are you doing that for? Popcorn coming out of my ear. This hour should start an uproar, but when he gets a load of what I got planned for tomorrow.
Good night, darling. What do you mean by coming home at 4.30 in the morning? Oh, is it 4.30? Yes, it is, and I want to know who you were out with. Oh, he was wonderful. Young lady, you and I are going to have a man-to-man -man talk. A what-to-what -what talk? Oh, honey, let's go out in the kitchen and have a chat like old times. I might even make some popcorn. Oh, we can't talk about it in the morning. I can hardly keep my ears open. Oh, no, I'm wise to that one. You'll stay in bed until after I leave for the office. Oh, no, I won't, Daddy, I promise. Well... In the morning. Tax Malloy, young eligible millionaire oil man, is in town on one of his business trips. However, if the lovely Margie Albright, the girl Tex squired around town last night, is any indication, it would seem that Tex is here on pleasure. Margie! Margie! Come in here! What is it, Dad? I want to know about this Tex Malloy. After the way you acted last night, I think I'm entitled to an explanation. You certainly are. I certainly am. You certainly are. I certainly am. You certainly are. Never mind that. Isn't there something that you have to say to me? Yes, Daddy. I think you're entitled to an explanation. Well, I certainly am. You certainly are. Now, cut that out. I had a civil question. I didn't want to start a civil war. That's the doorbell. It certainly is. Does Albright live here? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll take them. <laughs> oh, how beautiful. I'll take it. Isn't it cute? The eyes of Tex are upon you, sign Tex. <laughs> Shouldn't have closed the door, Mac. Just put them in the living room. <laughs> In all the state of Texas, the other 47, too, you're my little cactus, because I'm stuck on you. It's sick of that, Sick of it. Now, for the last time, will you tell me who this text is? Oh, I was just getting around to it. Tex Malloy was my special date last night. Isn't he a little late with his corsage? Well, that's the way he operates. He's a Texas millionaire, made all his money in oil. He told me he had 5,000 wells that just pump, pump, pump. How lubricating. Dad, I've been thinking about the trip to Mexico. Let's not stop that again. I told you before, I can't take you with me. Well, that's just it. I think it'd be a good idea for you to get away by yourself for a change. Oh, it's you again. Yeah, I could say the same thing. Oh, wait a minute. Who's that? Chief Kennishaw. How? Oh, the chief has a special message from Miss Albright. Here I am. How? Me, Chief Kennishaw. Tex Malloy, blood brother of our tribe. Oh, for crying out loud. Please, Dad, you'll offend the Chief. Thank you, my blood father. Dad, I didn't finish what I was saying about Mexico. I thought you just agreed that I should go alone. I did, I did. Well, then why are you bringing it up again? Well, it's just that you're leaving Thursday, and I want to ask you one question. Yes? Why don't you leave tomorrow? I almost forgot. Tex sent along some flowers for you, too. And a special message. All the way from Texas, over land and over water, I send along this cactus, because I'm stuck on your door. Oh, wasn't that sweet of Tex sending you something, too? I won't even discuss it. Look at this room. It looks like a greenhouse. Sending a girl a bouquet is one thing, but this is ridiculous. Don't worry, Dad. I'll get rid of the flowers. How? Oh. <laughs> that makes two of us. Oh. <laughs> Hiya. Not you again. Small world, ain't it? I wish I'd have known how to put in a revolving door. You don't know how right you are, Mac. <laughs> now, just a minute. Better get out of the way, Mr. Albright. Now, ah, wait a minute. What? Just a minute. Just a minute. Now, take it easy, fella. This is my apartment. and I... And with all these flowers, I hope he doesn't have hay fever. I think he's beginning to weaken. Keep them coming. Everything's going great, huh? And how. How? Why, don't overdo it. 
Margie, Margie, get me out of here. <laughs> Stop laughing. Open the door, it might be a gardener. Come in. Who died? Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> Article. What article? Right here in Charlie Atkins' column. Last night, your reporter spotted millionaire Texas oil man Tex Malloy with charming Margie Albright. They were chopsticking it in a secluded booth at the exclusive Chinese eatery, the House of Ching Hao. How? <laughs> Who's that? The last of the Mohicans. Go on, baby. I don't think you'll want to hear any more, Margie. Well, I do. Tex has only three interests in the world. Margie Albright, oil and cattle, in that order. And take it from Charlie, it won't be long before this newest filly in Tex Malloy's corral will be wearing the TM brand. I've heard enough. Margie, I don't want you seeing this Malloy anymore. Oh, Dad, don't be silly. Mr. Albright, as a red-blooded American man defending the woman he loves, I agree with you. I am at your beck and call, ready and willing to do anything you say, Mr. Albright. What would you like me to do first? Shut up! the reservation yet? Uh, oh, come in. Oh, no, you don't. We've had enough flowers for one day. Out you go. Out. How? Oh. Well, that goes for you, too. Come on, get out. Everybody out. Go on. Now, keep going. Go on. Out you go, all of you. Wait a minute, you. Why can I get a hold of this Tex Malloy? I have a few things I want to say to him. Well, why ask me? I'm only a messenger boy. Does this give you any kind of a message? I, I only deliver flowers, that's all. Here. Have a bouquet. Look, Mac, meet me at this address in an hour. Thanks. Now, as I understand it, Mr. Albright, you'd like me to find a guy to play the part of Tex Malloy. That's right. As long as she made up Tex, I'll produce Tex. Now, are you sure you've got everything right? Don't you worry about a thing. I'll have Tex at your place at 6 o'clock tonight. Something for your expenses. Oh, thanks. But I sure hate doing this to your daughter. How's my baby? Hi, Dad. Getting all spruced up, eh? Going out? Uh-huh. With Tex. Oh, darn it, I meant to tell you. He called up just before you came home. Who? A Tex. Tex? Yes, he said he'd be around to pick you up at six. At six? Where are you going? To the beauty parlor to get my nails manicured. It's only three o'clock. <laughs> See? Both clocks are on time. Uh, that must be text now. Answer the door. I didn't hear it ring. Well, it rang. No, it didn't. It did. It did not. <laughs> Margie, answer the door. Why don't you answer it, Dad, while I slip into a hostess gown? You haven't got a hostess gown. Now let him in. <laughs> Howdy, Margie. Hi, uh, Dave, Joe, Pete, Bob, Al, Tom, Dick, Harry. Try Tex, my little prairie flower. Tex? Oh, I knew you'd never forget me, little lady. Tex, my lord? That's right. I've been reading about you and me in the newspapers. Oh. Well, what's the matter? Don't you feel so good? Can I get you something? Yes, a nice, dignified funeral. Oh, Margie, aren't you going to bring your friend in and introduce him? Things are liable to be a little peculiar around here. Just don't let on. Oh, don't worry about me, none. I'm here to legitimize everything. <laughs> Dad, this is Mr. Malloy. Tex, this is Mr. Albright. Mr. Albright, Mr. Tex Malloy. Mr. Tex Malloy, Mr. Vern Albright. Vern, Tex. Tex, Vern. Bye, but the evening passes when good friends get together. Well, and good night, you sweet little old Texas boy. I guess you know. <laughs> Won't you sit down and make yourself comfortable? How do you like New York? Oh, this is mighty fine country. Especially these New York women. They sure got a pretty skyline. Down in Texas, all you see is heifers. Them's cattle, you know. Uh, Margie says you're in oil. Yep, practically marinated. 
that's a Texas joke. <laughs> Dad, uh, Tex looks thirsty. Why don't you go fix him a drink? A good idea. I'll make you my specialty, Tex. A racket club cocktail. A racket club cocktail? One drink and you feel unstrung. <laughs> that's a fine strings joke. <laughs> This whole thing has been a big mistake. I think you'd better leave. Leave? Well, I'm having a fine time. But you don't understand. All those articles you read, I I'm, I'm responsible for them. Oh, shucks. I'm just as much to blame as you. You don't get it. I'm in trouble. My father's worried about you marrying me. Oh, now, honey, don't you worry. I'll do right by you. We Texans always do right by our women. <laughs> Try this for size, Tex. Thanks. Mr. Albright, I hear that I've got you concerned about your daughter. Now, I don't want to beat around the bush. In a couple of days, I'm going back to Texas, and I'd be mighty proud to take Margie with me. Object matrimony, of course. Oh, Tex, this takes me by surprise, but of course, I've always known that someday I'd lose my little girl. But, but Dad! Hush, baby. Before I could give my consent, Tex, there are a few little problems to be considered. Margie's always lived in a big city. Oh, the fresh air will do her good. But all her friends are here. Well, I've got a large family. She couldn't shop in the stores. She could order by catalog. But she's all I have. You could come and visit us. Then it's all set? Hey, wait a minute, it's his serve. <laughs> what a day, Nothing will please you more than to have you as a son-in-law. Congratulations. Congratulations? Margie, just think, in a little while, you and Tex will become one. Oh, will that leave a lot left over? Oh, don't you worry about your old pappy, honey. I may be losing a daughter, but I'm gaining a son. Come on, honey, grab your hat. We'll drive up to Connecticut and get hitched right away. You stay away from me, Tex. Oh, now they said just like a woman want to be coaxed. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Tommy hired. You mean... Then who? 